up, everyone? Uh, welcome to tonight's discussion of the Idol episode two, Double Fantasy. Got my man Nine from Niner Yard joining me to talk about this episode, which Nine, I'm just going to say it, man. The last 10 minutes, bro. Ooh, that dialogue was rough. That was rough. The foreplay, man. I just got a question for, for the people at home watching now. Was, was that sexy, y'all? Did, did y'all get hot and bothered from the weekend? Or Tedros, I should say. Oh, girl, you're going to make me act a damn fool. Ooh, girl. Like I'm like watching this like, bro, who wrote this? Who, I'm who, hoping who, the weekend has better game than that. Or whatever gosh, he does man. in the bedroom. Whatever, at yeah, least man. sounds better. It was yeah. Uh, it was a bit strange. It was a bit strange. And strange again, is a great way to describe tonight's episode nine. There were some moments that I'm like, okay, we're getting some more backstory. We find out about her her close manager has been helping her the last year with finances. We learn about more of Diane really not being that close friend of hers and just kind of it's a part of a game. We get a little bit more backstory of Tedros and his kind of situation going on behind she the has scenes. A death. So she yeah, yeah. So there were some there were some moments now, but it's just like last week, man. I'm still not I'm still not completely involved in this story and these characters and, you know, more importantly, Jocelyn, man, I, I appreciate the performance, but I'm just not fully behind Jocelyn. I'm, I don't feel like the show has really put her, at least in my eyes, in the forefront to make me really sympathize with her. Um, but I'm, I, how did you feel now? How did you feel about this episode before we kind of break it all down? Now? Um, you know, like I said, uh, what Nathan was saying, that um, this episode was way better than the last, I think. Um, now I am going to say this, let me tell you, uh, that when you're YouTubers like us or whatever, and then you're editing clips together and you're putting everything together, you kind of get like a sense and a flow of like how a show is going to go, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, like how, uh, the narrative is going to be put together with these two episodes. I feel like I can edit them down to one episode <laughs> as an hour right like yeah a lot of the juice was in this episode where they were just kind of introducing a lot of people last episode almost for the complete episode um and i think with the lead of like oh tedros um you know no one can really figure out where he's going going where he's yeah. been yeah he's uh, a that would have been mystery. a little bit better to end the episode last week's episode on that with right? that kind of yeah that little bit of intrigue right yeah, yeah yeah and then yeah i feel like this is this was better this was better narratively and kind of kept me a little bit more engaged but oof, yeah it, it still needs a lot of work you know yeah man um it's a lot that this episode try again like you mentioned i thought that yeah i think both episodes are, are not the best but i will i guess i will agree with you in the sense of this episode at least had a little bit more going for it uh narratively speaking there was a little bit more meat to the bone especially when it comes to some of the like you were you know the reveal of uh tedros and him being hawaiian and you know mm -hmm. missing the last six months and getting that <laughs> yeah. behind the scenes of him and his relationship with his other I don't know what you want his his other people under his record label as we talked right. about last week. Like, what does he do? Like, is he a singer? Is he oh a producer? Gosh. Well, apparently he's a uh, he has his own label. label. Manager. Uh, he's a label yeah. manager, and we we meet Chloe, and we get more of Isaac and him and him getting into the relationship with Leia. So there there was more going on, but mm -hmm. I still don't think the show has a clear cut direction of what they're trying to present to the audience right these events with sharing a you know intimate moment and learning how to sing from mr tedro she's she's blowing up his phone man and and like we said last week he's he's teasing her he's just dragging her along making her want him making her believe that the only way that she can kind of grow as an artist is having him by her side and he's text she's texting him calling him and no response not she, he's not responding to anything that he's messaging to her, uh, which again just plays into her head. It'd be like, well, I need him. Where is he? Did you feel like he was already like playing a game though? Like he wasn't texting back just so he can kind of, oh, yeah, you know, 100%. he was ghosting her a little bit just so yeah. he can. He's, Le he's a yep. manipulator. Yeah, he's 100%. A manipulator. But outside nine, we have her and her crew outside, and <laughs> she plays the song for him, and the song is trash, bro. It's just a bunch of humming and, and, and moaning <laughs> and sexual noises as we cut to a scene and the title card shows that they, you know, they were having sex when they made the song. I don't know, man. If that if that song was re released today, it might be a hit because if I'm being honest, a lot of music no, now is trash. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? You know, maybe it's going to be a hit. Uh, yeah, 
let them let them cook. Let them let cook them it cook, up. man. Let them uh, cook and burn it all down. <laughs> what did you think about this this scene here with the the song being played and Nikki, who I guess I was confused last week. I thought that Nikki was kind of the co manager, but no, as they kind of guess maybe I missed it the dialogue last week. But she's like she's the executive of the mm -hmm. record label. Hence why she has a little bit more. I'm like, damn, she's kind of talking to her like she's her mom or someone that has control over. Well, she does have control over. Oh, she, she runs the record label. So what did you think about all that stuff going on now? And Nikki kind of putting her in her spot and going over again, we got a little bit more backstory of Jocelyn in the last eight months. She's been kind of in the rehab process, as she says, yeah. of paying for all this stuff. And she says, you need to be grateful. Uh, you are, we're not about to put out that song. We have been working on this for weeks. You will do this with a smile on your face. What did you think about Nikki putting her foot down, man? Um, at first I was like, oh yeah, you're laying in it a little bit hard. But then when she was kind of given her, um, reasoning and was like, oh, we had Madison Square Garden set up for you. You said that you were going to be able to do it when we gave you the chance or not. I was like, oh yeah, she's kind of right. You know, this might be the time that you need to be a bit more of a team player, and just let your label do whatever, you know. Uh, I can understand that if you're like an artist and you're like deeply comfortable with like wanting to put out your own music and something that you feel for. But, you know, you do have obligations. So, right. I don't know. I was kind of like, yeah, you kind of might just need to chill and let them handle all the other work while you relaxed a little bit right i couldn't agree with you more man like yeah you know we uh we are led to to feel bad for jocelyn which i still don't think the show has done a good job at least for me to really convey those like i'm i'm really not sympathizing with her she she does kind of she's uh kind of ruining her own career as we're, we're looking at it in live mm -hmm. action but yeah i'm with you now like i i i agree with nikki right you do have mm -hmm. obligations um you are you you have you, you, we've given you these eight months to kind of clear your head after the, the loss of her mother. And now you want to throw away weeks and months of, you know, strategic planning of this single and, and that the, the, the album coming out and for her to kind of out of left field with this random person, Tedros to come up with this remix without the authority of the record label being involved. Yeah. No, Nikki's a hundred percent in the right. You know, she, she's not the best as we see a little bit later. She, she goes about business in kind of a, a you know, an unprofessional way, but she's a hundred percent right in this, in this uh, moment right here. Nine, like, yeah, mm -hmm. you need to be grateful and just go along again. I'm always in support of like, artists whether you're a singer or uh, an actor whatever the case may be i'm always you know I, I would rather side with them than like a record label manager right. or a record label owner right. but in this case i mean what she's saying yeah kind of adds up yeah i mean just like let your next hit be your greatest hit and then let right. this one just kind of be your you know just go with the motions or whatever and get yourself ready and you know secure and you know have have, have your mind right mm -hmm. uh right now you're literally getting played by a guy with a rat tail maybe <laughs> you shouldn't be making like a hundred thousand dollar business decisions right? yeah <laughs> so i agree man i 100 agree and some and, of these and, bigger like movie directors when they do the the one for me one for you type of scenario when you mm -hmm. have you know an a tour director doing a big blockbuster marvel film and then they come back the next film doing a small independent to kind of get their right. creative juices going kind of the same conversation with musical artists right you got that one pop song you know and this is you know when i was growing up is you know in my day they had a whole artist you know 50 cent comes out with a new album and before the album there was four singles right and then the album drops and then he has four mm -hmm. more it was kind of like a i think they said they even shaped jocelyn to be kind of that 90s 2000 pop star Christina Aguilera meets Britney Spears where there is oh, a plan behind the whole sure, yeah. yeah wrapping up of a single so totally like you said nine let us put out this song let's get mm -hmm. the juices flowing you've been missing for a bit let's get the audience back on your side sure this might not be the most intellectual song or might not be you but let's exactly. put this out and then you know let's see where we can go from here so again i don't normally side with the people that make these uh terrible business decisions but in this case i i was right there with nikki unfortunately yeah. nikki doesn't know that she's just pushing Johnson further and for further into the hands of tedros as she runs off and like, it, it and this is what I actually liked um, about this episode. It seems like we're getting a lot more character development for everybody. Right, um, right. And, you know, a lot of their roles were being a lot more defined than this mortgage board of people that we had in yep. the last episode.
I agree, man. Uh, Cause last week, me and you both were like, "Can are are these people that she can trust?" Uh, which we you know we still there is. They all have alter- alternative motives. Like him mm-hmm. paying for a mortgage helps him out because if mm-hmm. his star is making money, he's making money. Mm-hmm. But to your point, I think that from him and even um, I believe her name is Destiny, uh, who who kind of had these pep talks with her later in the episode. We got more from her team. It seems like they do care about her a little bit more than what we thought last week. Again, there's still some mm-hmm. alternative motives behind, you know, what the they're doing. The motive for sure. Yeah, yeah, but it does seem a little genuine, uh, especially with uh, with him and uh, and Destiny a little bit later in the episode. So I did appreciate those kind of quieter moments, showing that she she does have people that I think are somewhat rooting for her. Fast forward now, and we talked about her scene last week regarding her uh, pleasuring herself and her choking herself, and we we get another one of those moments in this episode. Did we need that? Did we need another <sighs> moment like that? I, I, it felt it did feel very repetitive. The moment when she's in the, in the studio, she's listening to the song that her and uh, Tedros made, and she's listening to a particular part of the song over and over and over again. It's the part where... You know, you would imagine she was at a, at a peak in the, in their moment. I'll just say that. And this, and correct me if I'm wrong, nine later in the episode when we find out she has cuts in between her leg. This is from this that scene. That should correct? be from her. Yeah, she was like okay. punching a little. She was because I was I was thinking like, okay, is this, have, is this anything to do room? with with uh, yeah. Tedros in the previous? Like, did he do that to her? But yeah, I think it's safe to assume, uh, like you said, nine, that it was due to the. Her getting a little bit too, and as we talked about last week, she when she pleasures herself, she likes to also feel some type of pain, and mm-hmm. we are to assume that the glass in between her leg uh, that she had, she Was, you know clutched yeah. it too hard and cut her legs up, uh, which is crazy. It, it is crazy. It's but crazy. going back to your point now, and we talked about last week that the scene last week. Sure, it could have been done handled differently, but it did tell a story, at least from a character. Like, she pleasures herself. She pains herself. We get more of that again, but do we need that again? Like you said, Nine, mm-hmm. and I'll pose the question to you. Did you think we needed to see her yet again pleasuring herself and harming herself? Again, is that something that you think we need to keep seeing over and over and over again? Like, when I am talking about, like, these episodes could have just been one bigger or longer episode, or even still just an hour, right? Because it's this scene, right, with her pleasuring herself, choking herself a little bit, getting a little bit too feisty. Of course, this is setting up, like, for her video shoot and, like, why she would need, like, the all the hours makeup. Yeah. But then there's the other scene with, like, the choreography. And I was right. like, oh. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is the choreography from um, the first episode. They were just right. practicing that. Right. But, again, we went over that in the first episode the first time. Yep. Then she sat out and we watched it, and then she joined it again, and then we watched it. Yep. And then we're watching it again, again this episode yep. on Very the repetitive. Like, do we need that? I don't yeah. I really don't think we need all of that to set up these characters or to set up these motives. I agree with all. you, man. And I definitely couldn't agree with you more in regards to making last week and this week and just taking some moments and just literally making it one one episode. Because there's as you right. just said, we're repeating similar beats, different mm-hmm. locations, but similar results right uh which is is kind of lazy writing to me like we get it you know we're, we're not stupid sam let yeah. the writer of the show we, we get she likes to torture herself yeah we get that she is in a bad spot right now and she keeps repeating these cycles of just like not believing in herself which was a big theme in this episode but like i, I get it we can move on to get more right. about jocelyn besides because that was the same thing that you know yeah. uh, uh, that was on her mind in the first episode yeah oh everybody's watching me Watch i me. better yeah you know, get this rehearsal right. Okay, she killed it then. Then it's the same thing in this episode where yep. she just doesn't feel like she's nailing it. Oh, then she's going to nail it. Okay. I don't know. I agree, it's- man. I agree. But we do get a little, like I mentioned earlier, we do get more shades and more backstory and more of the behind the scenes of Tedros and his operation as we have his uh, his his Chloe doing his rat tail in the background. And he finally, <laughs> he finally I, calls her I started her laughing back. when I saw her little hands. Because uh, it goes back to what you said last week. Uh, uh, <laughs> hustle and flow, right? Hustle, <laughs> hustle and exactly. flow uh, exactly. <laughs> recreation right here. <laughs> as... Right. He finally, yeah, Mike. He finally calls <laughs> Jocelyn back after ignore, as he says, his phone was on silent. I mean, listen, man, listen, I, I, I don't condone these actions, but when I was a young player back in the day, those are the lines you would say <laughs> to someone you were maybe courting, like, "Oh yeah, my phone was 
was charging all day. My phone was on site. My bad, girl. How you doing today, right? <laughs> Again, he's playing her like a, and she's playing right into it. You know, he says his phone's been off all day, this, that, and the third. And you can see the desperation in Jocelyn's voice when she says, oh, all right, no, no, no worries. Uh, can we hang out today, tomorrow? And he's, again, playing her. Oh, I'm busy. I don't, you know, I'm doing this. Nah, 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 nah. Again, stringing her along, making her want him. And it's it's working to his advantage, man. Like, it's sad that she doesn't, she can't see through it. Again, yeah. I would imagine the way that they position Jocelyn as being this kind of pop star who's been doing this for years, that she's probably been through this cycle over and over and over again. Even this episode alludes to she was cheated on with her last boyfriend. So I don't know. Anon, exactly. It seems like uh, I know everyone. We're all human. We make the same mistakes. You know, we live and learn. But it's just like I would imagine someone of her caliber can see through the BS, but she doesn't, which is yeah, and bad, I think bad writing. <laughs> I don't is... know. I think it's supposed to go with the fact that, you know, she just had this breakdown and she's kind of like, you know, yeah. trying to figure her way uh, back up right. and navigating right. like and doesn't really like have that much faith in her team right now. Right. But it's more of a, you know, out of the frying pan into the fire situation with uh, yeah. Tedros. At the yeah. same time, I kind of get it i i kind of understand a little bit but, i mean yeah. listen man he in taking my because obviously we're the audience we know that he's a terrible guy we know what he's doing when he's on the phone with her in her mm -hmm. mind she doesn't i think in her mind she doesn't think that he's you know on the same level as, as she is she thinks that this is a come up for him versus the other way around like she doesn't really see it as as a, as a sense of like maybe this dude can play me because so i think you know in this i would imagine She's dated a bunch of people, like you said last week. She's maybe never had a guy outside of her industry, at least that she doesn't know of. She doesn't know he's been in the industry that she might just be like, oh, this club owner, you know, what, he can't get one over on me. But like I said, mm -hmm. it's just playing to it right, right under her nose. But as that's going on, Nine, we have, as the episode of Lucy Double Fantasy, we have a double game going on. You know, I'm going to be working on Jocelyn. Meanwhile, Mr. Blondie over here, uh, I believe his name is Isaac, he's running game on Leia. You know, and she's that kind of really falling into his hands. Which that, really that, yeah? that was super interesting because, um, yeah, it, it reminded me of like some like type of like Andrew Tate type of, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, girl cam show thing that they're yeah, running yeah. or whatever. And Read this know. book and you'll get every girl you want. Right. Yeah. And he's like now teaching Isaac his ways of how to, you know, land it. And, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some big scam going on here 100%. or just a uh, him to like claw out of his debts. I just thought it was interesting that what is this cult like? This seems to be like the most intriguing part of the show. Like, right. I, I would almost want to know, like, see a show about like how he how he you know, built all of this. Yeah. You know, and like what yeah. he's been through or whatever. I agree. This stuff right now. But I agree, man. It's going to be showing us We're with you uh, more, man. This this. This cult-like situation going on is so much more intriguing than this kind of pop star we've seen in a thousand times storyline. We've seen this before. A young mm -hmm. pop star messes up in life, gets wrapped into this conspiracy with these people that aren't good for her. We've seen it. But I'm like, oh, th like you just said, how does he manage to get these people like a Isaac, like a Chloe, like a um, you know the young girl that we'll talk about, the backup dancer? Like, how does he wrap them into his webs because he doesn't, I mean, he has his club, but I don't see none of them getting, uh, you know, vanity fair people running around interviewing them and having right. music videos shot by them. So he's, he doesn't seem to be successful. So mm -hmm. what is it that he's promising these young people that you would imagine he's manipulated? He's probably mm -hmm. told them the same things that he's telling Jocelyn, but like, okay, why aren't exactly. they seeing the BS? So I'm exactly. right there with you, man. That is very intriguing, but it seems the show is conflicted of like, not knowing what's the most interesting elements of their story. Back to the episode, man. We cut to this scene here with Jocelyn. Again, just the whole kind of Santa coming for Christmas. She's just constantly on her phone. We have these cut scenes of her working out, but constantly thinking of the night with Tedros. Her mm -hmm. having her uh, food made by her, her maid, not willing to eat, just constantly texting him, calling him. And this is where we kind of get the 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 seed being planted of him saying to her, maybe you need a new team. Maybe you need to look mm -hmm. elsewhere. Maybe you need to get someone else to restructure the single. So he's planting those seeds very early on with Jocelyn. And again, she's kind of really playing into it um, and not disagreeing with what he has to say. But now this is when the episode, to me, 
was kind of how last week was trying to show us this kind of chaotic lifestyle of her taking a photo shoot. There's a picture online, her team trying to put out the fire. She's trying to do this dance routine. Like last week's chaotic moments to me didn't play as well. Fluently speaking, the, the blocking, the staging, the, the exciting incident just wasn't that exciting to me. But this mm-hmm. time around this week, the chaos of going on felt a little bit more well put together. I'm referring to the scene where we see her at this very expensive uh, video shoot that she requested. She doesn't seem to be satisfied because, again, the seed's been mm-hmm. planted of uh, think bigger. You can be bigger. You have a deeper voice in you. And, and Tedros kind of plants her head. She's on the set, man, and we see her trying to do this dance routine, and she just wants it to be perfect. Now, Nan, is this her, the Jocelyn before Tedros trying to recapture the magic she once had? Is this Tedros in her head telling her that she could do better, she should be doing better? Like, what did you take her chasing perfection? Was it more of the Jocelyn, the superstar that we have been told that she is? Or do you think this was Tedros in her, secretly in her head, this like, if he was on set telling her to do it over and over until she perfects it? Yeah, that was like really strange to me. Um just because again it's like it's not the really the song that she wants to put out so it did seem like more of like self-sabotage than actual like oh i want to give it my all right right Right. maybe still just coming from a place that she doesn't believe in the song so you know if she's not given like 110 percent uh and she's not she's already not ever going to be happy with her performance right right so right. that is going to be uh used by her as a point where she can like just harp on that for so long like i am not very happy with this i'm not happy with my performance so let's let's go let's go let's go i will mm. run myself ragged and until this is perfect knowing that it's never going to be perfect Right. Interesting. So, so you take it in a perspective like she's self sabotaging a situation. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Interesting. Interesting. Absolutely. I think I got to agree with you, man. Like, I think, uh, and you definitely opened my eyes to the idea of her not wanting this single to be it, which might go back to the conversation we've been having as far as not Jocelyn not being this innocent person that we've been uh, maybe thought to believe so far in this episode. You, you might be onto something, Nine. Mm-hmm. But I got to admit, man, for the first time in this show, manipulative or not, I mean, if, if she is running this game, this is all a part of like a self-sabotage situation. She's, she's good at what she's doing, I tell you that, man. Um, because mm-hmm. when she's doing this over and over and over again, I'm like, damn. This is, uh, I kind of feel the pain, right? And we see her eventually, or the shoes are coming off because the feet are bleeding, the legs are, the scars are being open. I actually yeah. really like this sequence, right? Like, I agree, I, man. I this was is, like, Lily yeah. Rose Depp, like, she was getting it and, like, she yeah. really, like, um, put on a performance and, like, I could tell, like, in her face, she was, like, acting her ass off. I actually really yeah. like the sequence. I just wish I didn't, like, actually know already, like, the dance moves from watching it so many goddamn times. <laughs> right. The last episode, right? Yeah, yeah, I just, <laughs> How I many agree, times man. am I going to see this choreography? This choreography, Jesus. yeah, man. It's very mundane. But I, I definitely agree with you, man, as far as just, like, the performance by Lily, because I would imagine shooting this episode, shooting this scene in particular... I would imagine they kind of, you know, David Fincher, one of my favorite directors of all time, he's not, he's uh, known for having like literally 50 to 80 takes with, you know, mm. some of the greatest actors of our generation, you know, and I would imagine Sam and maybe Lily was probably game for it, like having the, not only the actual actor doing this over again, but then it plays into her character doing this over mm-hmm. again. So it makes the audience feel a little bit drained, feel a little, a little bit like, oh, can we move on? Can we just move on? So I definitely agree with you now. This is probably when one it, of the like, scenes. pulled off and her feet were like this. And like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like all messy. And then it was like, oh, yeah. like, I was like, oh, yeah, that looks like real like it looks painful man. All, yeah looks and then painful. The, the, she's jumping in the air and the guy's like hitting her thighs and right, hitting her like, in, the, in the in the uh back area like, and then like, all the while we are learning more about like ted rose like people yep. are chattering gossiping or whatever i agree um, the oh and i totally agree with you everything going on in the background destiny finding out about ted rose we have all that going on with um, Diane now, which <laughs> seemed a little bit too easy, just being like plucking yeah. someone. But I mean, I guess that happens, man. You see talent, mm-hmm. 
you're seeing your your star is falling off of her her uh pedestal you need to you know we'll cover pretty quickly this obviously works out to, to tedros he has two two horses in the game but only thing that i didn't really care for not in this whole scene was this this uh xavier i think his name he's like the head of marketing or something like that yeah the conversation between Xavier and, and Andy Fair, I didn't really care for that. I mean, I get what the what it was going for. Yeah. Was he was giving her, not knowingly, giving her dirt that she's going to probably use against Jocelyn whenever this piece comes out. But mm -hmm. besides that, now I didn't really care for this. I'm like, can we stop? I don't really care about Xavier and what he used to do and if, he, if he's mm -hmm. happy or not. Again, understanding that it's going to play into this article that she's writing, but I didn't really care for for this moment with all the other stuff going on. Yeah, and, you know, the way that she pulled out her notepad after he, like, <laughs> left and got up, I was just like, what, how is this really anything to do with what you're going to be writing? Like, yeah. who, who is this guy again? A flat dud, like, oh, like, this big mm -hmm. Xavier guy is gonna, this is gonna really ruin her career by him telling him, telling her that she's, uh, he's not happy with <laughs> where he's at in his career. Like, who cares? Right. I don't, what? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, we'll see. Whatever this article is, you know, yeah. obviously, she's gonna probably use it against her. But I will say probably the funniest moment throughout all this Chaos 9 was when um, Leia pulls over I think his name is uh, Ahim. Ahim. Uh, she, yeah, yeah. she kept saying he's a person he's of like, color. Yeah, person he's of color. Per right. Is he black? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it kind of to me is just like a social commentary how everyone's walking on uh, eggshells of like not knowing how to say certain right. things or cross your lines or offending someone. It's just like being she, overly. She's still my favorite character in the for show. For sure. Uh, for sure. And then the one time <laughs> she perfects it, which by the way, I mean. When they knew it was out of focus, stop right then and there. Like, I don't know why. I guess they why thought there was another coverage going on. It was another, I don't know if they thought they can salvage it, but it's like, stop it. Really <laughs> you know it's out of focus. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, is Jocelyn right there, because that was like yeah. the take when she just kills it. Perfect. And yeah. yeah, and then she just gets back on stage and starts crying. I was just like, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more, man. <laughs> it did. It did. I fell for him. But going back to, to this scene with Nikki talking to uh, Diane. So are we to assume nine? I don't know if next week or the weeks ahead that she's going to replace Jocelyn. Is this the seed that's being planted that once Jocelyn's know. burnt out that she has a, 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 a plan B to step in for? Right. Will it be that at the end of this, like Jocelyn is out, right. she's in, and Tedros is signed with her. So she's just like, you know, it's the weekend moving back into his own house and pushing out Jocelyn, and it's like, all right, scram. <laughs> is that going to be the end of the series, or I don't know? That's too easy, isn't it? Not? Isn't this too, the writing on the wall? Like, it has to be more yeah. tragic, more layered, more more depth than just right. I hope put me in, is. coach. I hope it is. Um, uh, uh, but we'll see. But like, yeah, there's definitely something developing here. And yeah, I mean, yeah, she sounds great she dances great. we talked about last week she is you know a pop k-pop artist i mean she you know no fault to lily she's a great actress but mm -hmm. you know this uh diane is a much better singer much better dancer yeah. uh which i think plays into the show and <laughs> she is better than her uh i wonder what the age difference is too because i wonder if like she's much more significantly younger than jocelyn if it is like this whole it seemed like the same tragic age or, that's what i figured too yeah. like why are you replacing her with someone that's like her like if you want to go younger i can see that but um i guess it's gonna it might play into this whole like you know this is hollywood you know uh one man's trash is another man's treasure type of situation where she's just gonna replace her after they had torn her down and broke her apart so Definitely something, and I think this 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 screenshot that I have on here perfectly summarizes just kind of the situation she finds herself in, surrounded mm -hmm. by all these strangers, and you know she's kind of by herself and and can't break out of it. So we'll see, man, what what comes of this kind of uh, the situation with Diane. But a, tra a tragic moment again. I don't think the show has done the best job of making me entirely sympathize with her, uh, narratively speaking. But when mm -hmm. she's finally broken down, like you mentioned, nine, she's crying. She's on stage. She, the shoes are coming off. There's blood. You know, Destiny's trying to pick her up, and she's trying to push through it. But then she has a moment where she's just screaming out for her mom, which mm. uh, it was sad, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like that moment, it kind of came from a position of just like, and again, I, 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 you know, speculated. I wonder if her mom was like a good influence on her or a bad influence. It seemed like she was good, and she misses her mom a lot. How'd you feel about that scene nine of her actually like breaking down and, and calling out yeah, for her mom? Like that was again like the kind of like emotional business that I wanted in the last episode, right? 
instead of just getting like a little bit of hints or whatever about how she feels about her mom, like we actually have a clear indication of she really relied on her mom as her emotional core to where she's never actually done this before without her mother. Without her mom there, yeah, yep. So so I was like, okay, yeah, now I'm caring. Now I feel like a little bit for this character and what she's doing at that point there was just no lead up right there's no like yeah. it didn't it feels like there was nothing in her head and almost as if she was just like putting that out there again like for the sake of just the fact that she didn't want to really do the shoot at all right right Right. So I'm like, is this part of her game that she's now just bringing this up? Or was this also something that she's been worried about this whole time? Don't know, right. because we're just seeing it now. Good point, man. Good point. I like where you're going now. And, and kind of sticking to that whole theme of like game being running. And again, I think the show deliberately, again, the title, Double Fantasy, we have these parallel stories going on. So, And they did it a couple times in this episode. When one thing was happening to one character, the same things happened to another character. Mm-hmm. And we have this scene here that I, that kind of was like, again, the whole cult aspect of it. We cut to this scene with Tedros. Oh, my God. This is so Yeah, weird. with, with Bronny, uh <laughs> over here, with Isaac, dancing. And he's like, you got to move. You're not a person. You're a, you're a superstar. And I, I think he had like a shock collar on him, on his neck, on his private areas, where whenever he didn't do the right move, he shocked him. But and what moves is he doing? What move right is this for? And of course, was it a porn? <laughs> or were they preparing to shoot a porn? I, I don't know what was this right. music video? Like, what, what was he dance performing for? It was a very weird <laughs> scene. Uh, nine, any, any thoughts from you on Mr. You know, uh, Blondie? How over many with the shock collar? White woman, does he need? Turn <laughs> them all up, man. Got to catch them all. <laughs> it's just kind of like crazy. Um, this whole performance that he's putting on, and then all of these people watching. Exactly, is he doing? And ex- especially that line: "You're not a human. You're, a, human. You're yeah. a star." <laughs> uh for what though? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he, <laughs> I think he has this? his hands in some type of porn situation. You know, while mm-hmm. while we're trying to get you on the rise to being a pop star, let me go ahead and take a couple pops on this scene with some some pornography right. on the side. Like, keep it up, thrusty. Yeah, keep thrusty. Yeah, Just put it lower. in. <laughs> this is where we get again, kind of that understanding of her financial situation, how she is struggling that he's been fronting her money for the past year and been paying for her mortgage for the past year and this goes back to the conversation earlier where it's just like it's kind of a double sword where it's like that is nice of him uh to 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 help her out in that sense but at the same time it's you know if he doesn't help her your star your client's going to be out in the street so what does it benefit you to not help her out so it's kind of like i don't want to forget this moment we get the big reveal which is uh which wasn't that big of a reveal because i think we alluded to it last week Diane is in cahoots with, right. uh, you know, Rat Tail himself. Yeah. You know, she's like, oh, is she a better, you know, what than me? And, oh, no, baby. No, no. You know, you know. Yeah. You still you, my you number did, one. You did call that out. I remember you yeah. talking about that last week. With yeah, the whole party. Yeah. That. Like, oh, let's yeah. go to this one party. Uh, let's make sure of it. And yeah, it turns out that they are, are working together. And this is all. Well, at least Diane, I guess she says that, oh, I didn't know this was part of your scheme, which it's kind of weird because yeah, right. it kind of goes against what I just said, but right. we, well, they're working together regardless. Um, yeah. And we, double we cross, find out double fantasy. There you go. There you go. Legend. And we exactly, exactly. And we find out in this moment when she says that um, Nikki wants to sign her, get Nikki on the phone. Let's negotiate. So again, this whole thing of Jocelyn being in the background, if it works good, if it doesn't, I got another ace in a hole. And, sh- you know, it's a win-win for him. He's going to have his cake and eat it mm-hmm. too, I guess. Is the thing. Run Jocelyn into the ground, right? And, you know, he's got uh, her to uh, pick up the pick up the pieces or whatever. Already yeah. got it in with the studio. Yep. And it's going to pay off for the rest of his cult or whatever. Uh, who knows? Uh, let mm-hmm. us know what you guys think about this reveal. Is Diane going to maybe see through his BS and, and give 
Jocelyn a tip that he's using her? Is she just going to let her be ran to the ground for she can come up on top? Will one of these characters have a tragic, tragic ending? And I'm referring to a death being involved. Mm. Let us know what you guys think this mm. particular plot's going to go. Because the last week, Batman just appeared, you know, out of thin air with his trench coat from, from hell. But now he's back, and he's back with a group this time, now, and he has his whole crew with him uh, <laughs> yeah. coming through. The rest through. of the vampires. The rest of the lost boys and girls. This is where we're <laughs> officially introduced to Chloe, time with Isaac as he continues to play games. Doing some, some, some coke. Uh, they're doing some alcohol. They're just partying, living it up. And in mm -hmm. the meantime, Josh is like, hey, this is fun. You know, new, mm -hmm. new kids on the block. You know, yeah. Chloe's butt <laughs> that, that butt ass naked <laughs> running in the pool. And <laughs> poor Layla, man. Did you feel again? I know she's one of our favorite characters, if not our favorite character show so far, but she's just kind of like numb to it all in the sense like she wants to say something, like she's trying to get information from um Isaac when they're hooking up. And as we talked about a little bit earlier, like he says, which again, I think he was being authentic nine, but you never know. It could be all part of the lie. He tells her that she he met him in church and yeah. he was singing and he changed him. He transformed him and he's godly. Again, I don't know if I fully believe all of it, but it sounds pretty true. Uh, what did you think about all this stuff going on here now before we get into the, the most ridiculous lines of dialogue I've probably heard uh, this year? Yeah, like I feel bad because, you know, she isn't even in the realm of like picking up that she may be being played. She found herself a little boo or whatever, and she yeah, seems to be kind of content. And um, I was wondering if it's just like, it It was picked up from the beginning. It's just like the weekend, um, Ted Rose was just like, all right, that's her um, assistant, best friend. You yep. need to go and to get, get on yep. that and like have yep. her distracted <laughs> so I can put this on yeah in. yeah so it's a it's been a dirty game it's been a dirty game from the beginning till the next scene where you know we see her just like getting her back blown out i was just like oh maybe she's going to be you know putting this all together but yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure <laughs> me neither man it's just like she she seems to have a clue but not entirely um she seems to be kind of clueless at the same time. It's kind of a weird situation going on. Which even speaking of weird, I guess I'm just keep thinking about this Diane situation, that conversation early in the episode. You get the you get the sense that Tedros knows he keeps tabs on all his little minions and all his little followers. How did he not know that Diane was like a backup dancer for one of the biggest stars in the industry? And vice versa, when Diane saw that he took her home that night or they hooked up like it was that i'm just thinking about yeah. that scene when they're like they seem to not know that either one of them was in cahoots with jocelyn that that just that plays weird so it makes I me guess... think like you would have thought that tedros right. had planted that seed like i want you to get in with her become a backup dancer become her friend but he had no idea that she was involved and it's kind of well, weird I think I about because it. like all of those girls are like kind of like he just says send the word out to bring these people here to the club, right? right and that's right. where we lay the uh, incident, right? Or where mm -hmm. we, you know, put our claws in. So maybe it's just like, you know, she had brought her back. It actually worked out, but he didn't really know that it was no the extent like of that. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, know the extent of it or like who True. it was that like brought her in. But I think Good that's point. what's Good going point. on with all of the other girls that we've seen uh, uh when um he was putting on that performance for them uh right. <laughs> yeah so it's a good mm. point it could, you're mm. totally right because again we're under the assumption that it's been you know eight months of just kind of slowly recovering and diane could have that could have been the well but it seemed like her and diane had a good relationship like she was like you know they had that scene in the sauna and when Diane checked on you, okay, girl, like it seemed like they were friends for mm -hmm. a minute at least, but it maybe speaks to like how Jocelyn just allows anyone just to become her best friend overnight. Mm -hmm. She trusts Tedros with one night sleeping with him, and the next day he's like moving in. So I guess it just kind of speaks to she's at this very vulnerable state right now where like right. anyone that can come in is going to be on her team because she's lost her mom and she's very in this state of just like uh, anything and everyone is giving me attention is has the good intentions i guess mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see man but we pivot over to again we talked about the scene with him learning he found him in the church which we'll see if that is to be true but 
We have Tedros and Jocelyn still having, he's still in her head. By the way, while all this is happening, Chloe's running around the house naked, uh, yeah. trying on her clothes, trying on her diamonds, almost putting herself in this position. New, yeah, like yeah, I'm going to be the new, new Jocelyn, Jocelyn once be, right. we work her and, and run this game on her. Right. They're in the bathroom, nine, or in the bedroom. And, um, yeah, man, this is some of the worst dialogue I've heard in a very long time. I thought the weekend's per, uh, delivery, they're kissing. They go upstairs. She tells him, I want you to get the, the robe from last week and, you know, screw me until I'm blacked out or whatever. He sees that homegirl's in the in the closet. She gives it to him. And not, take it away, nine. Like, I, I don't even know where to begin, man. I tried to write down some of this worst dialogue. Lines that stood out to me was the foreplay of, like, you gonna have me acting a fool, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the stuff yeah, this kid was saying to her is like, is this is this very generic? It was fifty shades of no, right? Like 50 just shades uh, of no. um, Hell no. <laughs> fifty shades of Tedros. Um I, I don't understand. Uh well, because I was looking down on my phone. And I looked back up because he was talking like that. Who and signed off on this writing? Absolutely. Like, who, again, these are all of the same questions that I have. Um, I'm mystified just like everyone else's. And I've been kind of a uh, apologist for this episode, but I cannot apologize for this scene. This yeah. stuff this man was saying to her was so bad. I felt bad. Like I wanted to turn mm -hmm. it off because it was just so yeah. bad. Like who wrote this? <laughs> Is this the weekend? Like, and, and listen, I talked about. I don't listen to his music that much, but he he says, you know, he when he's singing his songs, like they got some it's bars. Now I don't know really... if he writes those bars, but I'm like, yo, right. you guys, you know, I would like, think that this like... man would know how to spit game. Nah, but, <laughs> exactly. nah. Nah, bro. Yeah, like uh, double fantasize about something else to say. I don't think we need to. Hear... Not to get too X-rated now, but I don't even think we need to hear her performing the act on him for as long as the show had it planned on what she was doing to him in this scene to me was a little bit overboard. Like, I didn't need to hear her, you know. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm looking at the scene as we're talking about it. Turn around, girl. Let me see them. Like, the stuff this man was... <laughs> let me see them. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, yo, this is bad, Big man. Juicy ass. That juicy like not, ass, girl. It's not that juicy. It's like, bro, are, um, you, are we in high school, man? Like, um, what is going on? Uh, but then it doesn't, it doesn't get any better, Nine. Nah. The next, I believe mm -hmm. it was the next morning, or at least the next scene, she's done doing what she's doing. You know, and, and shout outs, like you said, shout out to Chloe, man. She does have some pipes, man. She was kind of hitting those bars on the piano and, and playing the piano. Mm -hmm. She seems to be. Regardless of how we feel about this cult, he he, I guess he does have an eye for talent. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Diane's pretty pretty dope. I don't think uh, Isaac. I mean, he was kind of hitting those notes, but the, but the but the stroking and the moves he was doing was 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 kind of stiff. But you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's a family affair, not as they say, as they're singing this song about mothers not accepting their childs, and 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 it, and it goes on further about that's like mm -hmm. regardless of who they are, they're almost essentially speaking to all these broken people in the room of a sense where it's just like we come from these broken homes but hey that's just who mm -hmm. we are that's I that's felt my like family that song was planted that song felt planted as hell to exactly to bring Jocelyn. Jocelyn. this is her family yeah like, exactly yeah, we understand exactly. you mm -hmm. you need to be with us yeah. right they all come from these broken homes their moms were either there or not there and they're all kumbaya but we end on mm -hmm. a shot with layla Again, we don't know if she sees the game after getting her back blown out or if she's part of the game. Does she want to warn her friend? Is she like, I, I'm, I'm confused at this point, but we end with this mm -hmm. uh, sing along. Going back to the, to the Layla of it all, man, do you think she's going to play? I don't want to say she's playing dumb, but she's, she's from when we first met her, she's always taking the side of Joss and like, oh, the photo, maybe it wasn't as bad as it is. And she seems to want to give her the benefit of the doubt. Will she speak up? <laughs> Or will she just keep playing the oh, game? Oh, yeah. She's going to speak up. That's the face of post-nut clarity right there. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, okay. I got my nut off. It's like, what's happening again? Like, who the fuck are these people in my house? Who? who what y'all singing about? Okay. Actually, I don't like any of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out. <laughs> yeah. I hope so, man. I hope she speaks up because she seems to be very preserved and doesn't like drama mm -hmm. or tension. Um, but, I mean, she might also... She has to play it smart because 
she can also realize that her best friend is kind of caught in this web and anything that she throws at her might bounce back and she might just be like, oh, you're just jealous, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know, Layla might have to play it a little bit smarter where she has to get like actual proof or evidence that she's being played. Mm -hmm. uh, but it might be this, it might be too late. So any final thoughts from you, Nine? Again, I know you mentioned earlier that you feel like episode two was a lot better than episode one. Um, but what were some things that makes you want to stick around for next week? Because right now I'm, I'm kind of on the fence based on these last 10 minutes with this terrible writing. But what say you, Nine? What did you think about this episode overall? And, and does it keep uh, you interested to what's going to happen in the weeks ahead? Yeah, I, I think that episode three will be intriguing. It seemed good. I, I watched the preview. I usually never like watch previews, but I watched a preview for this one and it did seem like, okay, like there's going to be a clash. Now the teams are going to be meeting up. Um, Jocelyn, Leia are going to be needing to make some decisions about how they're going to be moving forward. And also, um, you know, the, the claws are going to be sinking into the situation a bit more. So, uh, uh, I think this was all good setup, right? I wish that this next episode was actually going to be episode two, and all of this that we got was just, you know, just one episode, or you know, them yep. dropping a two episode premiere or something. Yep. I would be a lot lighter on it, but mm -hmm. it's a lot of, um, it's it's weird. It's it's a it's a weird show shaping up to be shaping up to be a weird one. Yeah, and, and 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 again, knowing that it's only six episodes, nine. So we're kind of mm -hmm. at the the halfway point. Next week we will be. You know, I, I totally agree with you, nine. With episode two, definitely was more intriguing because last week, as we talked, it was pretty boring for a premiere episode. And there's a lot of stuff in this episode that would have benefited from being the last week to really kind of catch our attentions and really kind of sink us in. But the thing that's keeping me on board so far, nine, and and you said it perfectly earlier, is the stuff with the cult, like. How does he go around recruiting these people? How do they stick around? How do they not see through his BS? Uh, this repetitive behavior of like, okay, who's next? Is it Chloe? Is it uh, is it you know Diane? Is it is it uh, Isaac? And and there seem to be some other women that he's in cahoots with. So like, how does he prioritize who gets the the, mm -hmm. the next thread to be the next star like how do right. they not eat each other and tear each other apart just wanting that fame so that right now is the most intriguing element of the show i will give props to lily i think she's doing a really solid job so far like whenever she really has yeah. those vulnerable moments even though i don't feel like the show has written those out for me yeah i feel like her performance is giving me a little bit more than the stuff on the yeah. page I hope um, she really, is in yeah. more stuff after this. Agreed. You know? Agreed. So. And, and I hope they don't, which it seems to be that way now that they're just going to go with the stereotypical. She's going to have her blinders on. She's not going to, she's, her peripherals are cut off. She's not going to see through any mm -hmm. of Tedros' BS. I don't like when shows do that to any character, but in particular, like young, impressionable women that's being sucked into a situation. It's like, come on, right. we're, we're 2023. Can we, can we not mm -hmm. do that same song and dance? So I hope right. that's not the lane we're going down. But like you said, based on the trailer, it seems to be all these fools are moving into her house. Some, you know, her team is going to slowly but surely be out of the house and out of her exactly. way. It's, it's going to be frustrating. So right now, now, I don't know who's that character that's going to be like not an idiot and having us being like, yes, mm -hmm. talk, mm -hmm. do the right thing. Every, everyone right now seems to have the egg on their face. Uh, and I don't know if the show is going to be able to, really give us something enticing based on these first episodes but uh first two episodes so we'll see nine uh as you said last week man these conversations are almost as just as fun uh than the actual yeah. episode as we break <laughs> it down but we'll see what's to come up at nine let us know in the chat what again, you all thought of this episode your pros your cons your thoughts your theories your favorite moments your least favorite moments and uh, what you all hope to see in the weeks ahead don't forget right. to like share comment subscribe to my man nine nerd yards whose information can be found in this video and we'll catch you all on the next breakdown